Okay, this is the project we're working on this week. It's a uh, conversion project. We're taking a McCulloch uh, chainsaw block and uh, converting it into a uh, cart engine. So the idea behind this is to uh, make it look like a early style McCulloch engine, uh, an MC5 um, which there aren't many of those around and uh, we wanted to recreate that look using a, a chainsaw block. So this is a, a block that I picked up uh, last year um, at the big one at the swap meet they have there in Fremont, Ohio every year. Um, it's a 1-51 chainsaw block. It was a standard bore. It had a lot of taper in it. Uh, it had to be bored out uh, 20 over uh, to clean up the taper and take out all the ring grooves that were in there. Uh, we got this thing bored out pretty nice. Uh, you can see inside the bore here. Got a nice clean fresh bore going there with a nice uh, cross hatch hone pattern. Um, the other thing we did when I got this part was to uh, add two boost ports in the back there uh, that aren't in the uh, original motor. So those two ports you can see right there have been added in. They shoot up towards the top of the cylinder. You can see how they're fed um, through what was the um, third port uh, cast pocket. These are normally um, a passageway directly up to the carburetor that bypass the reed valves. Uh, on the cart motors, they used to piston port intake uh, the uh, cylinder block by putting three round holes underneath the piston skirt and uh, those would feed through this uh, third port kind of a piston port effect um, but uh, you get more more of a power boost out of the out of the boost ports so we decided to go ahead and boost port this thing now to do do that and add these boost ports in you need to uh, cut out the side of this pocket here so we cut that out so it would feed through the reed valves and uh, that allowed the uh, the boost ports to be fed properly. There were a couple of big ribs in this area here that were normally on the chainsaw blocks that were removed on the later period cart motors. A lot of the guys modifying these motors early on in carting removed those right from the beginning just to allow the reeds to feed better and uh, um, allow uh, different modifications to be made in the motor. So those were all cut out. Uh, and exhaust ports were raised slightly and, uh, and squared off. Uh, you can see a little bit of the, the detail there. Uh, if I can get this at the right angle. There you go. Okay, you can see the raised and slightly squared tops on the exhaust ports. That gives them a little bit more um, port area, a little quicker timing, a little more performance. Another thing we did was take... Uh, and fill in this area here. This was for a rubber boot spark plug cover. Uh, the MC5 engine had the spark plug not on this side of the cylinder head but on the other side. So that's what we've been, been working on here is trying to make that look. Um, and uh, that was done by taking some of these uh, covers that were originally for having the spark plug boot on the uh, other side. Filling these in with epoxy and a aluminum backer plates to make sure they stay in place. The same thing was done on, on this side. You can see underneath this was an aluminum plate that was added in with, with JB Weld epoxy and this area here was machined off flat and these two holes were added for accessing the, the head uh, bolts. Uh, this will bolt up like that to cover the flywheel when it's in place and now we got this look of the MC5 where the spark plug is over on this side and um, I've got the uh, a head here that we're going to use this is actually an MC6 head the MC6 had a, a higher compression head smaller golf ball chamber diameter uh, than what was introduced on the MC20 uh, for instance and uh, the MC20 head this is what was originally on the MC5 I believe it was this same head and uh, it's hard to see on the camera, but there's 
slightly smaller diameter of this uh, golf ball chamber. Now this MC6 head I have here was uh, needled badly at one point. A um, little bearing failure where the needle bearings got shoved into the, the top of this and uh, that's been smoothed out. Uh, it shouldn't affect performance. I've run these heads like that before without any issue. I don't see reason to take a lot of material off of this. I'll just weaken the part and take a lot of time to do it. So we're just going to run it like that. It'll be, it'll be fine. And um, I did have to remove a little bit of material from a couple of these fins to get it to fit under the piece we added to fill in the uh, uh, side cover. Uh, the one special part I had to get was this gasket. This is an uh, originally uh, uh, a new old stock, or not a new old stock, but a remanufactured reproduction gasket. Looks just like the old original ones. It's a sixteenth of an inch thick, uh, 0 0.064 thousands very thick gasket this was sold with the mc5 as a hop-up uh, when they went with the stroke crankshaft mcculloch introduced an mc6 crankshaft hop-up for the mc5 and that's what's in here um, this is a used uh, mc6 crank uh, i picked up at the bay one last year in a, in a box of parts that had the saw block in it so put those two things together the connecting rod was in that same box of parts um, and uh, those were those were some nice finds. There were a bunch of other parts in that box that I got for $35, and we're, we're making good use of it here. Uh, the piston in here is an MC49 piston. There's still a lot of those floating around. It's a brand new Burris 20 over piston with rings. Uh, it's a really nice, well-made piston, and uh, that's what's in there. But you can see with the stroke crank, the uh, piston pops up above the top of the cylinder. See it pop up there? So that's why the thick head gasket has to be used. So when the crank was stroked, um, the stroker crank was put in the motor, then the piston pops up, you need the thick head gasket to go in there. And then the head will go in this way. We put it all together. And bolt up like that. So the spark plug will be on this side. Uh, the fan shroud goes on here, and the other nice piece we got is this, which is a remanufactured uh, MC5 nameplate. Looks just like the original one, and it's even printed on a, a thin aluminum plate, just like the original one. So it's going to look really, really nice, and that's going to go on right here. I haven't decided which way to put it yet, because the original ones are made several different ways it'll probably be put on that way and uh, look like that after the motor gets painted 